The USS Gerald R. Ford is the world's largest aircraft carrier in the world's dominant navy, and it is really enormous. It took eight years to build this aircraft and several more years to test it. It was named after the 38th President of the United States, and Gerald Ford is the lead ship of the U.S. Navy. It is large enough to tower over the largest building in plenty of towns. It is over 1,000 feet in length, that's about three American football fields, and nearly 250 feet high. The aircraft carrier also has a whopping 25 decks in that massive space. The massive ship can carry over 75 aircraft and can house over 4,500 people. It is powered by two nuclear reactors and, when fully loaded, weighs in over 100,000 tons. This makes it the largest warship ever constructed. The total building cost of the ship is estimated at over $17 billion, which includes the $5 billion spent on research alone. It came in at almost 22% over the intended budget. Construction began in 2009 and was completed and finally delivered to the Navy in late 2017 after several delays. The ship was formally commissioned by Donald Trump. Gerald Ford himself died before the end of the construction, so while the naming was already in place, Ford was never able to see it completed. The ship's primary purpose is to provide a launch base for the 75 aircraft it carries. When the aircraft is not on deck or on a mission, they are stored inside a huge hangar. In the hangar, there's also an array of weaponry and several massive lifts for moving the weaponry from the storage location to the aircraft ready to be armed. The aircraft are controlled from a bubble, which is formerly an integrated catapult control system. The officers set up high-paced catapult-assisted takeoffs through this. In the tower, powerful computers assist in arranging the aircraft on the deck. Thanks to the improvement in technology, 25% more aircraft can be launched daily by 25% fewer crew members than would be required on the Nimitz models of warships that predate Gerald Ford. In the long term, it is hoped that the reduced crew number will help offset the high cost of this new ship. The Ford's electromagnetic launch system occupies less space, weighs less, and requires less maintenance than the steam-powered ships before it. The reduced strain will benefit the aircraft themselves, and technical adjustments will mean more types of aircraft can be launched. The technology did cause some construction delays. It is, however, truly a technological marvel. While the major functions of the ship are usually controlled digitally, there is an actual physical steering wheel for backup. Both the physical and digital systems can be used to navigate the ship, but the touchscreen setup is said to almost drive itself. Changes from previous ships are so significant that in the earlier days of testing, Ford's crew reported that they were practically working out guidelines for how to sail as they worked. In order to protect its own decks, the ship features numerous sea sparrows, short-range anti-aircraft and anti-missile weapons. It also features ram weapons and lightweight surface-to-air options that can be moved around the deck. The twin nuclear engines can be used to power the massive ship to speeds of over 30 knots through the broader control center. As you can probably imagine, at 100,000 tons, it takes quite a lot to stop. Once the planes land, there are about 40 different fueling stations to help get them back off the deck. Officers can have access to the Ouija board model which is an old way of doing things. In Ford's case, the sailors collect autographs of famous visitors, including presidents, and also keep those on their Ouija board. There are chutes on the sides of the deck, which is provided for offloading any weapons that might be misfired. 
This safety measure was put in place after an incident in the 60s when a weapon failure led to a fire and caused over 100 deaths aboard the USS Forrestal. The Gerald R. Ford naturally features a lot of military hardware, but it is also designed to provide a modest level of comfort for the thousands of people who live in it for extended periods. Other modern adaptations include USB ports for phone charging, fewer people in a cabin, large gym areas, energy-efficient light bulbs, and improved air conditioning. The space has allowed for distinct sleeping and resting areas. Crewmen are also impressed with the shorter queues for food linked with the ship's layout, improvements to their berth, flat screen TVs with on-demand TV and boxing facilities. The marking on the hangar door could double as a basketball court, which makes for interesting games at sea. There are always the plush conference rooms that include polished tables and ceremonial flags, while the captain's cabin is home to a lot of Gerald Ford memorials. There's a history that connects President Ford back to the ship itself. His picture hangs over the aircraft hangar. He's honored not just as a president, but as a Navy veteran too who is said to have saved the ship from a particularly bad storm. Unfortunately, the ship is not fully operational due to teething problems. In early 2021, a report stated that the ship was facing a launch failure of its aircraft every 181 attempts, instead of once every 4,166 required. It's still unclear how these issues are going to be fixed, however, the latest evidence states that the ship might be deployed sometime in 2022.